Hello my dear friends, how are you all doing? I hope you're doing well and I have a little video for you today about my green penguins. Now many of you probably know the older series of green penguins um, which were dedicated to crime, uh, crime fiction and the like, uh, but Penguin relaunched it not long ago and so far they brought out 20 books in the series and I've been collecting them and I've got all of them up to date now. Um, over the last, well, several months. And uh, the new one should be released, I think, uh, in June. Uh, another batch of maybe 10, I think, bringing the total to 30. But they're really nice, and uh, some of them are completely new to me, some of them are not, but uh, I, I, I really like them. And uh, I thought we'll go through them today, so you can see what, what's available. The first two are all, uh, both by uh, Georges uh, Simenon, and they're Maygrave books. This one's Maygrave's Revolver, and this one is Maygrave's uh, Maygrave and the Headless Corpse. Now, this was my first introduction to the Maygrave series, and of course, it was followed then by this one. And I have to say, I've never read any Maygrave before, but I'm absolutely hooked now. I, I think I've read ten, uh, <laughs> ten of these. I mean, you can see they're very small. Uh, books, novellas really, but I've read 10 um, since the beginning of the month of March and they're absolutely fantastic. And I think he wrote close to 400 novels and around 75 May Grey stories, May Grey books. Um, and as I've done 10, I've got quite a fair few more to read. Uh, but yeah, I look forward to those. I really do. And I, I thoroughly recommend them if you've never read uh, if you've never read any uh, May Gray. I did read one of his other works as well, a non-May Gray book called The Train, and that was also uh, fantastic. So, yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm think i definitely uh, a fan of um, Georges Simenon. Uh, these two are also by the same author. I've not read them yet. I've known about him for a while, but I haven't, as I say, read any of his works. And the first one here is The Black Lizard. I mean, the covers are great, and it's they have like it typed on the back. And I say they, fo they focus on um, crime and espionage. But this is The Black Lizard by Edgar Rampo. And this one is uh, Beast in the Shadows by Edgar Rampo. And it's kind of funny because I didn't realize, as I say, having known of the author a while, I didn't realize that his name is a uh, Japanese transliteration, if you like, of Edgar Allan Poe. So Edgar Allan Poe sounds kind of like Edgar Allan Poe, so uh, prolific Japanese uh, mystery uh, novelist, and both of these do look really good. I'm not, because, you know, I've got a few to go through, I'm not going to read the backs of uh, all of them, but I might on, on some of them that seem uh, especially uh, intriguing. Although I have to say that this one does sound kind of intriguing. It's, very, again, very... Thin, quick, easy read, uh, probably. Uh, I'll, I'll read the back of this one, why not? The chance meeting between a crime novelist and a married woman blossoms into friendship when she confides to him that she has been receiving threatening and sadistic letters from an ex-lover who says he's watching her in the shadows. He knows he must help her. But the trail unexpectedly leads to another writer, Oe Shunde, the mysterious and secretive author of works of grotesque violence. Suddenly nothing is as it seems. And nobody is safe. I mean, how fantastic does does that sound? I'll try and keep them together in ones where there's more than uh, one author. The next one will be easy to do because he doesn't need much introduction. Um, they are both books by John le Carré, and I believe in the new, new lot coming out um, in June, there will be at least another uh, le Carré uh, the night manager, but first off we have a call for the dead, which is a George Smiley uh, book, uh, the first uh, book featuring George Smiley and uh, Le Carre's uh, debut novel. It's it's good. Again, it's not massive, so it's a quick read and well worth your time if you haven't read it. Um, and the other is of course the sublime. Tinker Tailor Sold a Spy, the first book in the Carla trilogy, uh, but you can really read it uh, as a standalone without having to read the others. The ones you read it, why, why you wouldn't want to read the others, I can't imagine. Uh, also, of course, featuring uh, George Smiley. Next up 
we have two espionage books, Mystery and Espionage by Eric Ambler, which are going to be keen candidates for Dr. November. The first being The Mask of Demetrius, and the second being uh, Journey into Fear, which I guess I can read the back of this one, can't I? It all began when Graham was taken to a nightclub in Istanbul and noticed a man in a crumpled suit watching him. Then he narrowly missed being killed by gunfire on returning to his hotel room. Now, terrified, he's been helped to escape in secret on a passenger steamer home. But although Graham may try to run, he cannot hide from his pursuers forever, and soon he is caught up in a nightmare beyond his control. Wonderful. So exciting. So exciting. Okay, the next one, uh, or the next pairing, um, are by another author I came to recently. I haven't read either of these. Um, and at least one of them, I believe, uh, features um, a detective who uh, is quite prominent in uh, in her works. Maybe five or six books dedicated to uh, that detective, uh, whose name escapes me for the moment. See if it sh if it shows me. Uh, no, maybe it doesn't. Um, Oh gosh, is it Alan? Alan Grant, isn't it? Inspector Alan Grant. And I think one of these features him, but I may, I may of course, be wrong. Uh, but one is um, Brett Farrar by Josephine Tay. 21-year-old uh, Brett Farrar is an orphan, alone in the world without friends or family. So when he's offered the unexpected chance to impersonate Patrick Ashby, the long-lost heir to a vast fortune on a country estate, he agrees. Brat is the spitting image of Patrick, who disappeared years ago. At first, it seems like Brat can pull off this incredible deception until he starts to realise that he is in far greater peril than he ever imagined. And the other is this one here, The Franchise Affair, Josephine Tay again, of course. 15-year-old um, Betty Kane can recall every detail of the room where she stays, sorry, where she says she was held at the country house known as The Franchise even the crack in its round window, but her alleged kidnappers, a quiet living mother and daughter, claim they have never seen her before. Somebody has to be lying, but who? As the case sparks a media frenzy, it is up to the unassuming village solicitor, Robert Blair, to find out. So probably not, then. Probably neither of these are indeed um, Alan Grant uh, novels. But, you know, no matter, no matter. Uh, again, really wonderful uh, covers. And is that the last of the pairings I can do probably yes so yeah I think that's right indeed so uh, next up we have one that we're going to read in April I think it's April is it I can't remember I should remember but definitely for the Patreon uh, book club we are going to read um, Davis Grubb's The Night of the Hunter which I've already talked about a bit when I uh, mentioned it but great cover there I'm really looking forward to that one I have to say uh, another one we have here is Ross MacDonald's The Swimming Pool. A well-dressed wealthy woman has arrived at Archer's LA office, having intercepted a poison pen letter accusing her of adultery. Reluctantly agreeing to help her find the culprit, he dives into Slocum's moneyed, oil-rich California world. And when Maud's mother-in-law is found dead in the swimming pool, secrets come to the surface too. For the urbane, world-weary Archer, a case of blackmail soon becomes murder. How exciting. Next up, we have C.S. Forrester's um, Payment Deferred, yeah, uh, which again, I believe, is uh, based around blackmail and fraud and that kind of thing. Bank clerk William Marble is facing financial ruin until a visit from a wealthy young relative, a bottle of cyanide and a shovel offer him an unexpected solution, but there is no such thing as the perfect murder. Gradually, Marble becomes poisoned by guilt and fear and his entire family corrupted. Sooner or later his deeds will catch up with him as events spiral out of control in the most unpredictable ways. Next up we have Dick Lochte's, uh, or Lot's, um, uh, Sleeping Dog, featuring Leo Bloodworth, known as the Bloodhound, who's a, a world-weary LA gumshoe detective. So again, that should be pretty wonderful. 
Another author who really needs no introduction, but I'm going to introduce him anyway, is Raymond Chandler. And here I have two of his books together in one volume, The Big Sleep and Farewell, My Lovely. Now, I read The Big Sleep for the first time, uh, I think maybe two years ago now, uh, and it was wonderful. I read it as an e-book. I have an annotated uh, version, but I haven't got a reading copy. So this is great. And I, again, really like this cover here. Uh, that they've done. So that's wonderful. So I've read The Big Sleep. It's definitely worth a reread. I've never read Farewell, My Lovely, but I'm sure it will be uh, wonderful, of course. So next up, we have another Dorothy. Uh, although we haven't had it. Have we, have we had a Dorothy? Ah, I'm probably getting confused. Sorry about that. Uh, Dorothy B. Hughes, In a Lonely Place. Dick Steele, a former fighter pilot, moved to L.A. after the war looking for a new life. But the city is gripped by fear of a strangler who's murdering women in its lonely places. Dick's, however, is not scared. And when he bumps into his old friend Brub, now a detective on the trail of the culprit, he's thrilled to follow the police's progress. A dark truth is slowly revealed in a noir novel like no other. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> Uh, next up, we have one that seems, I don't know, it sounds really fun to me. And it's uh, called Cotton Comes to Carl Harlem by Chester Himes here. The Reverend Deco Malley has just made 87,000 bucks by duping his followers, only for white gunmen to hijack the rally and escape with the cash hidden in a bale of cotton. Now ace detectives Gravedigger Jones and Coffin Ed Johnson must get the good people of Harlem their money back by any means necessary in a raucous breakneck adventure involving double crosses, exotic dancers, a racist colonel, and a whole pile of bodies. <laughs> Sounds great, right? <laughs> uh, next up, we have a Len Dayton, but it's not really an espionage one. I suppose it's, well, probably sci science fiction, really. Although um, there's espionage in it, and uh, it is, um, it is, uh, uh, murder as well, but it's an alter alternate history, and that's SSGB um, by Len Dayton. Uh, it's November 1941, nine months after the Nazis successfully invaded Britain. Churchill has been executed and the King imprisoned in the Tower of London. At Scotland Yard, renowned Detective Inspector Archer just tries to keep his head down, but when what seems a routine murder in Mayfair in a Mayfair flat leads him to something far deadlier. Archer becomes caught between his brutal superiors and the British resistance and drawn into a plot that could change the future of the world. How can you not want to pick up a book and read it after reading something like that, eh? How fantastic. Now, penultimate one here is, uh, again, another one that really intrigues me. It's by Anthony Price, and it's called Other Paths to Glory. I believe there's another Anthony Price book coming out in June with this in this uh, in this series. Just, I don't know, I just really like them. Um, Paul Mitchell is a young military historian whose life has changed forever when two men, Dr. Audley and Colonel Butler of the Ministry of Defence, visit him with a fragment of German trench map and a lot of questions. Then somebody tries to kill him. Can you believe it? Paul, his life now in danger, agrees to go underground on a mission to solve a dangerous mystery. What really happened during the Battle of the Somme in 1916? And why does somebody want to keep it a secret well to find out i guess you're gonna have to read this book and lastly we have uh michael gilbert's book definitely falls into the espionage i believe which is game without rules in a peaceful kent village dr behrens lives with his aunt sorry mr behrens lives with his aunt at the old rectory where he plays chess and keeps bees his friend mr calder lives nearby with Rasselas, a golden deerhound of unnatural cleverness. No one would suspect that they are in fact working for British intelligence, carrying out the jobs that are too dangerous for anyone else to handle, whether it's wiping out traitors, Soviet spies or old Nazis, in these gloriously entertaining stories. Well, it just sounds fantastic. So let me know if you've read any of these, if you want to read any of these, if you're interested in acquiring any of these, uh, I, I would say it's nice to come in and start collecting something when it's relatively new. Although, as I said, the green the green uh, penguins have been around for a long time, but it's nice to see this newer 
uh, edition of the Modern Classics Crime and Espionage series. You can see there on the back uh, how they've done it. But yeah, I think it's going to be great fun. And I look forward to getting to all these throughout the course of this year and, well, I imagine probably into next as well. So thanks so much for watching. Do take care, everybody. See you all soon. Bye.